In this video, we're going to look at using I and J notation. Here we've got two vectors, A, which we're saying is 3i plus 2j, and B, which is 4i minus j. So whenever we see an I, that's a movement in the x direction. And whenever we see a j, that's a movement in the y direction. So vector A goes along the x3 and up the y2. So A, we can say it goes along 3, up 2. So overall, the vector A goes along 3, up 2. B goes along 4. So along 4 and down 1. So if we've got a negative J, that means we're going in the negative y direction. If we had a negative i, that would be in the negative x direction. So a is a long 3 up 2, b is a long 4 down 1. And we can just add these together. So 2a plus 2b. So if we've got 2a's and 2b's. We've got 2 3i's plus 2j's plus 2 4i's minus j, which is 6i plus 4j, plus 8i minus 2j, and we can just add the i's together and add the j's together. So that's 14i's and 2j's. So if we went 2a's, so did this twice, and b did this twice, in total we would have gone along 14 on the x direction and up to in the y direction. How about 2a minus b? So that's 2 3i plus 2j minus 4i minus j. So that will be 6i plus 4j minus 4i and plus j. which gives us 2i, so add the i's together, add the j's together, 2i plus 5j. 3b minus 2a, so that's 3 lots of b, minus 2 lots of a. So that's 12i minus 3j, minus 6i, minus 4j which is 6i minus 7j. Okay, here's another set of questions. Pause the video, give these ones a go, and press play when you're ready to go through. Okay, so this time we've got A as a long 4 up 1, and B a long 3 down 2. So 2A plus 2B. So 2 lots of the A plus 2 lots of the B gives us 8i plus 2j plus 6i minus 4j, which is 14i minus 2j. 2a minus B, so 2 4i's plus j minus 3i minus 2j which is 8i plus 2j minus 3i plus 2j, which will give us 5i plus 4j. And finally, 3b plus 2a. So 3, lots of 3i minus 2j minus 2 lots of 4i plus j. So 9i minus 6j, minus 8i, minus 2j, so that will be i, minus 8j. 3 forces, f1, f2, and f3, act on a particle. Given the particle is in equilibrium, find f3 when, and we're given f1 and f2. 
So in order to be in equilibrium, that means the resultant force has to be zero. So our forces are going to add up to zero, which means the I's equal zero. So our I's will be zero and our J's will be zero. So we're looking for the force that balances out the other forces. So F1 plus F2 in the first case is 5I plus J. So if we add them together, these two forces make 5I plus J. So what force is going to balance that out? So F3, what do we need to make the I's equal zero? That would be minus 5i. What do we need to make the j's equal zero? That's minus j. So overall, f1 plus f2 plus f3 add up to zero. Okay, question two. So this time we've got f1 and f2 add up to, so 5i plus i is 6i. 3j minus 6j is minus 3j. So f1 and f2 make 6i minus 3j. So what's f3? So what makes the i 0 will be minus 6i. What makes the j 0 plus 3j? And finally, question 3. So f1 and f2 add up two. So we've got, if we do the i's first, we've got minus four plus one. So we've got minus three i. And j's, we've got plus one minus one, which is zero. So f1 and f2 add up to minus three i. What do we need to make it equal to zero? We need three i. We don't need any j's because the j's are already equal to zero. Okay, here's another set of questions. So work out what F3 is in order for the particle to be in equilibrium. Okay, so the first one, what do we have? We've got F1 and F2 adding up to 10i plus 2j. So what force is all that do we need to make it zero? We need minus 10i minus 2j. Question two, F1 and F2 add up to 5i plus j. What force do we need to make that equal, to make it, make it equal zero? Make F1 plus F2 plus F3 equal zero. We need minus 5i minus j. And question three, so F1 and F2 add up to so the i is a 0, and we've got minus 5j. What do we need F3 to be for the overall force to be 0? 5j.